Hey guys, welcome back to StreamGood, and today we're gonna to be talking all about overlays. So the goal of today's video is we're gonna take your boring looking stream from this and turn it into something that looks like this. And once you know how this works, you can add whatever you want. You can add your webcam, you can add follower goals or chat boxes, anything you want, you can add to this once you're done with this video. Now, of course, you can go out and pay someone to go make an overlay for you, but a lot of people who are just starting out with streaming don't want to pay a lot of money. And if you make your own overlay, you have a lot more control over what you want to put into your stream overlay. So you don't have to go hassle an artist to go at it for you. And the best thing about making this stream layout is even if you have no artistic talent at all, it doesn't matter, anyone can do this. So before we get started, it's important to understand how this overlay works. So it works in three layers. At the bottom, you got your blurry background layer. On top of that, you have a drop shadow, which is just a transparent PNG image. And then on top, you have your game. So starting from the bottom to do the blurry background layer, we're going to use an OBS plugin to do that. And I'll show you how to install that. It's really easy. The second thing is making the drop shadow layer, which you can use anything you want. You can use Photoshop or if you don't have the money for Photoshop, you can use GIMP. We're going to be using Inkscape just because it's super easy to make drop shadow layers in that. And then, of course, you have your game, which is just any old desktop capture or game capture or anything like that. So with that being said, let's jump into the desktop, show you how to set all of that up. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the first link in the description box. You'll see this page, click download. All you're going to get is a zip file and that will look like this. And then you want to go to where your OBS install is located, normally under C drive, under program files, or it might be somewhere different if you've done a custom install. Just take the contents of the zip file, go to where you have OBS installed and drag the contents here. Once you've done that, you can open up OBS again. And if you right click on your game source and go to filters, you should see some new options that you didn't see before. Specifically, you'll have the blur filter, but you'll have a few other ones like 3D transform, which you can play with if you want. But the one we're interested in is the blur filter. And the second thing you're gonna notice as well, if you close and go to add, and you'll see a new option called source mirror. And all that's going to do is going to take a copy of another source and replicate it exactly and allow you to add filters of that independently of the main source. And this is exactly what we're going to use to create our blurry background. So we're going to right click here and click source mirror. Click OK and just select your game source. So what you'll notice is OBS created an exact copy of our game source. We're just going to right click this and rename it. We're going to call it blur and we're going to drag this blur layer to the bottom. And on your keyboard, we're going to press control F that'll just make the source full screen. And then we're going to right click it, go to transform, edit, transform, and we're going to change the bounding box type to scale to outer bounds. And all that did is it filled up the source. So that stretches out and fills the whole frame. So right click the source, click filters and click the plus sign and go to blur. Under type, we're going to change it to Gaussian and turn up this pixel size all the way up to 25. Now you can play around the slider depending on how good of a GPU you have. This is going to use up a lot of GPU resources. So make sure you've got some overhead to run your game as well. If you're having a lot of issues running your game, turn down the slider, but if you have a good GPU, you can bump this all the way up for a nice blur effect. And we're basically done, but what I like to add is a drop shadow layer just to give a little bit of depth and separate our game from the background. This part's optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I really think this is the secret sauce that makes this overlay work. So to make the drop shadow effect, again, you can use whatever you want. If you know how to use Photoshop, you can use that if you want. We're going to use Inkscape Portable. So go into the second link in the description box, download from publisher. You'll get an exe file. Just go through and install that wherever you want. And once you have it installed, go into Inkscape Portable and just open that. Okay, once you're in Inkscape, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the size of the page to 1920 by 1080. That's a 16 by nine resolution. That's what you should be streaming at. If you're doing something funky, then you know what you're doing, but change it to 1920 by 1080. And to do that, we're gonna go into file, go to document properties, and under custom size, you wanna change the units to pixels, PX, 
and just go 1920 by 1080. And then here we're just gonna enable the page grid and click this rectangle tool and just make a rectangle where you want your game to be. Just make sure it's the correct aspect ratio for me because we're playing a SNES game. I know that the game's gonna be four by three. So we're just gonna drag and make a rectangle and click on the select tool, select your rectangle, and we're gonna change this to pixels here and change the width and the height to, let's just say 400 by 300. Now it's gonna be a little bit small. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger. So drag in the corner, hold down control and select to keep the aspect ratio. Just make it about that size and put it somewhere in the middle. Let's just make that a little bit smaller. And then from here, we're just gonna select the rectangle, go into filters, shadows, and select drop shadow. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select live preview. And we're actually gonna change the shadow type to outer cutout only. This will only keep the drop shadow and get rid of the black rectangle. So once we've done that, we're gonna click apply. And what I'm gonna do is duplicate this drop shadow later by pressing control D. All that does is make the drop shadow just a little bit darker, make your game stand out a bit more. And that's basically it. We're gonna go into file, go into export PNG image, go page, and just export that to wherever you want. And what we'll do is go into where we've exported the PNG image and just drag that straight into OBS onto our main scene. So we're gonna drag the background into the second layer and we're just gonna rename that to drop shadow. And now the last thing we gotta do is just resize our game so it fits the drop shadow. And we're done. So. Now that you've done that, you can go add in whatever you want. You can add your webcam, you can add chat boxes, go and make this your own, but you've got all the basic tools to make this your own layout and you can customize it however you want. So hopefully that was informative. If you guys have any other questions related to streaming or if I just didn't make myself clear, leave a comment, join my Discord. And if you make something cool, share it with us. So get out there, go make your own layouts, create something unique, and I will see you guys next week.